today it's going to be for pre-stressed concrete composite girder bridge and I'll be focusing on the widget modeling and analysis review. Uh, before we get into um, the um, yeah, before we get into the actual part, uh, let me briefly walk you through uh, the composite girder bridge application overall. So either for steel or pre-stressed concrete composite bridge, uh, you could take the wizard uh, modeling approach or you can manually uh, model these uh, bridges too. Um, so if you are if you have projects uh, both for, um, for steel composite girder bridge or pre-stressed concrete composite bridge structure. If you have both cases, uh, um, yeah, Midas Civil can actually handle both them. And what I'll be covering today, right, the wizard modeling approach, it's not only, um, it's not specific for pre-stressed concrete composite. So whatever I'm covering today, um, I'll be briefly showing you um, the steel part two but you can actually connect it that uh, you can actually follow the same procedure for a steel composite bridge project too. And also um, after uh, modeling your structure using the wizard, um, either for steel or pre-stressed concrete composite, uh, you can then move on to running analysis and then um, generating the report for design and load rating check. Um, at this moment, we currently support the design checking and load rating check for um, ASHTO. For ASHTO, uh, you can actually check steel composite girder bridge, um, steel composite, uh, I mean pre-stressed concrete composite girder. Uh, you can also check the design for the reinforced concrete pier, uh, including pier cap, um, so the substructure, or even just like a common, um, you know, reinforced concrete beam or column, whichever the case is. And you can also um, check design and optimize design for um, the cross frames. Um, as of right now, uh, we do not have the design checking or load rating check for Canadian code, but uh, this is a, actually a um, great uh, development. We will we'll be updating our design database for Canada code um, by the end of August 2016. So if you look at this page, um, the idea you can get is so if you are already a MIDAS user and, um, and if you want to learn about how to model pre-stressed concrete composite bridge, you're at the right place today. If you are a MIDAS user, you've already worked on those things, but if you are not sure how to use the wizard, you're also at the right place um, because the wizard we've recently implemented um, on this feature um, back in January this year. And also, if you're not a MIDAS user yet, uh, but if you do have steel composite girder bridge and or pre-stressed concrete composite bridge projects, um, and if you happen to have multiple other programs to handle uh, these two type of structures, you're also at the right place because MIDAS Civil, uh, you can actually handle either structure type um, using uh, the same um, approach throughout from the beginning to the end. Uh, the overview of the training today, it's actually very simple. I try to break down the training um, so that, you know, it's more comprehensive from the attendees' perspective. My, in, my um, purpose today is that uh, this wizard modeling process and how you're able to review the result is as clear to you as possible. But at the same time, I, I am not going to cover every single very little details that are you know already covered in the tutorial manuals that are um, that we distribute all the time. Um, so if you have any further questions, let's say any specific detail kind of remained uncovered during the training, um, please feel free to you know let us know uh, by getting back to our um, follow-up email or even to the invitation email. But overall, um, uh, overall, the, so if you look at the top portion. Um, the application flow for pre-stressed concrete composite girder bridge is like as shown over here. You can model using the wizard or manually. It's up to you. Uh, but wizard, you know, it can definitely uh, make the process faster. Uh, you, you're not stuck to the wizard template. You are free to make modification after creating the model using the wizard. 
and you can run the finite element analysis, meaning your results will be very accurate, and also you will be able to examine your um, result, meaning you know you're not really um, you don't really need to be frustrated with the black box design program. And then you can check your design um, of the beams or the composite girder and also check uh, the load rating. And this design checking and load rating are performed based on the same model. You don't need to create models uh, multiple times. And this workflow not only applies to pre-stressed concrete composite, but applies to the steel, con uh, steel composite girder bridge also, steel plate um, girder. Uh, so the wizard modeling can be summarized into four um, large portions. First, you'll be defining the general layout of it, you know, how many spans do you have, how many girders do you have, you know, stuff like that. How many, what are the sections that you're going to be using? Um, and we also have database for the sections, which I'll be uh, walking you um, over in the very beginning shortly. And uh, you, you can define the tendon. Um, this part uh, you can also define automatically or manually. And then as the last part, uh, the reason why I put this part kind of crunched is because they're uh, much more simpler or they can be done more quickly than uh, the other three parts. Um, and then I'm going to walk you through what are the different type of analysis result uh, you can take and how you can simply extract them. Okay. When, when I get to the wizard, let me actually get to the program um, for showing you the wizard. Okay, so when you have a program open like this, okay, so here where you can first get to is go to the structure main menu and over here. As I mentioned to you before, um, uh, today I'll be covering the pre-stressed concrete composite girder bridge, but you will notice that there is a very similar looking wizard right next to it. And then if you also quickly open the steel wizard, this is for concrete. You will notice that the layout looks almost identical, meaning if you learn flow for one, you can apply for two, um, the other also. So today you're learning about uh, the pre-tensioned or post-tensioned composite girder bridge wizard application, but uh, remember, you learn this, you will also learn the other part, and you can easily apply them. And before I get into this portion, I first want to touch up on some of the basic basics first. So bear with me, give me one second. Let's get to um, the properties first. So I actually want to, um, you know, very basics about how you can define your section or material. I don't want to bore you with it, but let me quickly uh, mention that when you go to the pre-stressed concrete composite tab in the uh, section properties, right, under the properties main menu, you can go to the section properties and section tab, and then if you click on add, you will be, uh, you will be able to see all different tabs available for defining different type of um, sections. What I want to cover is that um, don't spend too much time defining your, your sections one by one, but very quickly, if you go to um, pre-stress concrete I, or if you go to pre-stress concrete value over here, what happens is you will be able to see the database, the sections that are already um, embedded in Midas like this, right? And whenever you see these databases, it also means that uh, you can apply the straight um, str tendon strengths um, automatically. And if so, open here to find the proper database you want. And also, don't miss this part, uh, not only for the pre-stressed concrete I, but if you go to PSC value also, go to the section data, click the DB, you will be able to find more extensive um, data over here. Even the box beams or, you know, like above T or new sections or void um, box sections, you can find this type of um, different state um, database um, in my level. And whichever ones you do not see yet, meaning, you know, we are continuously enhancing our database, 
But if you not yet are seeing um, your um, state section, uh, you can simp uh, you can actually um, import those sections uh, from the CAD to Section Property Calculator tool, and then import it to over here. We have a separate manual for it. Please feel free to reach out to us um, for how to do that. Uh, but today, let's focus on the wizard uh, modeling approach. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to open uh, one of the models that I provided to you already. Uh, you may not recall, but in the training invitations, I actually provided um, um, the, um, the technical materials in advance. If you happen to have, um, if you have MidasCivil installed, um, if you have the models downloaded, please feel free to open them with me. And I'm actually going to mention to you when is the proper time for you to actually follow uh, because I don't want you to be um, paying attention to every little um, you know, click that I make. I'm going to specifically give you directions when is a good time to follow so that you can actually see the effect of the wizard, right? So right now, um, if, you, if you're ready with the materials, um, open the program and open the model file. The model file that I just opened is um, um, 0831 precast underscore two span underscore default. Right? 0831 precast two span default. Um, and if you just open this one, if you take a look at the tree menu on the left, you'll notice that I put in the very basic um, properties, um, you know, for, to save our time. They are, if you look at, if you look at them one by one, they are like the materials for the garter or for the deck portion, and they are also the composite um, garter sections, uh, not this one. So this, um, you know, eye girder section is predefined. So let's go to the pre-stress composite bridge wizard. Again, it's under the structure main menu. And from here too, um, this is where you can also follow. So after opening this model, right, go to open here and then go open one of the wizard. Right? And let me walk you through uh, the wizard um, very briefly. So if you look at it, um, the layout where you can define the overall geometry of it, right? Here, when you first come to it, you're able to define which type of girder you want to work with. Is it precast or splice girder? Meaning, you know, when even if you, um, uh, regardless, you have a simple precast um, project, or you have a little more complex um, splice girder project, it doesn't matter. Um, as long as you are into this wizard, you're set. If it's very simple, if you already know your very comfortable way of working with it, fine. But if you need to use a multiple tools for, you know, splice girder, let's say, um, in Midas, uh, it's uh, simply a matter of defining the girder type and kind of walking through the rest of the layout um, you know, as the wizard kind of, um, you know, naturally guides you to. And also, um, you can choose the modeling type between all frame or modeling the concrete deck using plate. Um, span information, this is where you can define how many spans and how long the spans are, uh, like that, right? And also, okay. And you can also move on to see um, the total deck width is, uh, you can define them over here too. And here, the spacing A and B, right? So the spacing A is like the distance between the actual girders um, before the concrete is poured. And the spacing B is like the gap between where the bearing is located to the end of the girder so that, you know, this little leftover part is reflected in your analysis and design check. And uh, this also means that um, before the concrete pouring, um, the dead load at the non-composite state or in the non-continuous state, right? 
So when you extract your um, non-composite uh, dead load result, it means that you know um, the results are based on the non-continuous, you know, simple span um, condition. And after the pouring happened, then this gap will be filled so that the bridge is continuous. In case it's a multiple span um, program, right? So that's what the spacing A and B are for. Uh, you know, detail, um, something detail, but then some programs are not able to able to handle this. And also for clarification, I had a few uh, notes. Um, yeah, uh, to clarify, you know, the section and the material properties are not saved in the wizard file, but they are saved in the base model of Midas, Midas civil file um, of an extension MCB, right? So that uh, the wizard, uh, with the wizard, um, I opened the wizard file for you before. Uh, what the data will be brought in are like the inputs that are in, um, that are put in in the wizard, right? And then the section and the material, you can define them or you can open a base model or you can actually import them in the middle of using the wizard. Just wanted to clarify that um, before moving on. Okay. Okay, and... Uh, yeah, I actually have multiple questions coming in, uh, but, you know, just to kind of keep the flow of it, um, please excuse me, but I will definitely come back to all the questions, um, you know, after covering uh, this page of the wizard. Okay. And uh, and then after defining this type of define, um, so this type of um, geometric layout, uh, you can move down to the substructure portion. So this part, right? So it's a little bit different from the conventional design program. So you will have to come with um, certain geometry layout uh, when you come into the wizard of Midas. And then when you get to the boundary and substructure, this is uh, the part where you can define the structure without the substructure or with the substructure, right? And this is where, you know, it, um, also the design for the pure and pure cap comes in useful. Um, because here, if you actually model with the substructure, right, um, the peer and the peer cap will be modeled uh, by the wizard, right? And then that means, um, you know, after modeling, you're not only modeling the superstructure, you can also model peer cap and peer, and you can also check the design for them. We also, um, the part that I'm covering right now, right, we have training materials, um, you know, tutorial manuals in the PDF format. I'm also for the design of the peer cap and peer. Um, so, you know, in case you want to cover all the details, uh, no worries. Please pay attention to cover, you know, to fully understand the flow of it today. So this is where you can specify the material. Number two, uh, for peer cap um, section, peer cap section. And for um, the column, we're using the column section. And these were, as I mentioned to you before, predefined um, and saved in the base model that I opened at the very beginning of demonstration. Okay. And then you can move on to the section tab, right? And the section here, uh, you can define your deck thickness, uh, define the material for the deck, girder, concrete each, right? Define the number of girders, right? And what are the distance between them um, by defining the offset, right? And uh, after that, you can also define your diaphragms. Um, diaphragms, um, it's very simple. So basically, you can just define, you know, like a sub, um, um, you know, like a middle or like the end um, um, the, um, cross beam. So it's a very simple, um, just a rectangle um, section. Uh, and let me actually show it to you after running the wizard, how they come into uh, a part of the real um, structure uh, model. You can define their location. Um, if you do not have any cross beam, uh, minimize defining them, um, let's say one or two, um, so that you um, do not need to, uh, you, do not, you do not need the cross beam in your actual model. And, and then you can get to the garter portion. For the precast, it's very simple. For splice garter um, um, composite bridge, it's a little more complex, but we'll also get to that one. 
But for a precast, um, um, more than 90% of the time, it's just one girder section. So you can simply pick, uh, you know, um, mo most likely it's division of one. There's no division for girder for precast in most cases. So you can simply pull the type of girder for span one. Also simply pull the type of girder for span two. And then, you know, now you're done with the section portion. Then you can move on to the tendon tab. And the tendon tab here, uh, you can actually define um, different type of harp, harp two, or like the curved type of tendon um, using this section. However, however, um, don't be don't be overwhelmed yet. <laughs> if you um, if um, all of the straight ones, right, uh, you can actually automatically import them um, according to the database, um, the section database um, from Ashto or um, your DOT. So remember, the sections that you already saw the database for, um, you can also pull out the tendon um, um, for these sections. Not over here. Uh, we can get to it in a little second. But this part, this part, if you need to define any of the heart or the curved, or you know, if you are okay defining them a little more manually like this, um, this is where you can um, use them to define how many girder, how many span, I mean strands, 12, right? If I shrink it to 10, you will notice that, um, um, so if you, as you change the number, you'll actually see the changes in the drawing like this. So, After you change them, you notice the change over here like this. So it's a real-time data with the drawings. And after defining the whole set, you can actually um, um, link it with the jacking stress, right? Um, if, if it's also, you know, if you, if you also need to consider grouting, you can actually define, you know, after um, actually casting this, how many stages after um, do you want to consider um, grouting? And you can actually simply edit as a part of your tendon um, assignment list, right? So, and then it's going to actually let you know how many tendons are there in total so that you can quickly overview um, each um, tendon group you defined. And when you get to uh, the loading portion, this is very straightforward, very simple. If you have a, if um, if you um, just click the loading you want to consider, and then type in the loading value, uh, you um, the wizard will automatically apply the um, the weight for it. You don't really need to convert the loading data uh, for wet concrete and the wearing surface. You don't really need to convert it um, per girder weight. Uh, you can simply input the weight of the concrete and the thickness of the. Deck. Um, the program will take care of um, distributing and assigning the uniformly distributed um, beam load. And then uh, you can also go to the construction stage. For the precast, I don't want to get into, you know, this is a very simple um, process. And also for the precast, there's not much staging we really should cons consider. So um, in this case, by default, the program is going to erect the substructure first. It's going to um, cast, um, you know, erect the girders, right? And also diaphragms, uh, the temporary um, or the permanent diaphragm. And then the deck is poured as the loading first. And then the deck actually comes in to be permanently settled um, above the girders. And then after composite loadings are activated and the long-term effects, you know, creep and shrinkage um, can be also considered um, in the last stage. And all these staging, right, um, um, if, you, uh, if you happen to use, you know, simple design programs for precast bridges, it may sound a little more complicated, but if you know that wizard will take care of setting them up so that when you go to the design checking, right, um, in the design checking, the program will automatically extract the forces from, you know, the non-composite state um, properly. It's also going to extract the short-term composite uh, result from the stage four, or 
if, if it's different case, because there are more stages, it's going to um, extract the result from that stage properly. And for, you know, considering the crypt shrinkage effect, it's also going to extract the result from the last um, stage. So that's an overall composition of the wizard and how you can also um, create your bridge model like this. So once you are done, you can actually say OK. If you want to save your data, you see the Save As button over here. Just like how I opened the wizard data before, um, in order to be able to you know, pull um, your current or past data, you just need to save um, this wizard data as a file. So whenever you want, you can actually quickly pull it out um, like this. So here, if you look at it, uh, give me one second. Just want to quickly give a variation of color so that um, it's more clear to us how the model is defined at the moment. OK. So do you remember the information that I put in the wizard? Um, two span and total six girders. Um, and then um, notice the tandem profile also. Um, these are all straight ones. If you want, you can also go to um, you know, use the wizard template for simply defining hard or curved ones. And if you look at the work stream menu over here, you will notice that all different data are registered in the work stream menu meaning the wizard um, just created um, this data over here. Um, OK, and the flow that I just took before, it's actually the same exact process you can take for steel composite um, plate girder bridge and also for spliced um, girder composite girder bridge. And let me very quickly open the splice girder example. This one hasn't been covered in any of our trainings yet. Um, I'm not going to cover um, you know, all of the details and take up the time, but then I want to uh, point out the major differences between the precast and the splice girder um, after you choose the girder type in the very beginning. So if you actually choose the splice girder type, right? One of the major difference is uh, when you go to uh, the section part over here, now you can actually define the splice point. Before, for the precast girder interface, uh, we didn't have the splice um, girder point, you know, we couldn't assign it, but then in when you actually choose the spliced girder um, type in the layout over here, when you go to the section, it's slightly changed just the girder portion. So everything else remains the same. How many girders you have, how far apart are the girders are, and also, you know, what is the uh, material assigned to each part. And then, um, uh, but then the main difference between um, the precast and the splice here, you can simply check on the splice point to be able to distinguish, um, to let the program know this is where the splice point is, right? So here, if you look at it, um, I'm defining my section, you know, girder alignment to be symmetric about the center of the girders along the entire bridge length. So I checked on the symmetry option, right? And I have total seven divisions. If you look at my diaphragm and girder information, uh, you will notice that, you know, for this example, I um, currently have I currently have three spans, so if you look at it, I have the drop-in sag um, approach portion here, right? And, and I have the end portion here, and the end portion, at the end portion, I have a splice um, girder point, right? And also at the next splice girder point is at the end of this TPD segment. Uh, let me actually open the model and kind of help you connect with this.
give me one second. Okay, so let's try to connect um, the splice garter point input uh, with this one, right? Let me just activate um, one segment so that it's easier to understand. Okay. So if you look at it here, remember the name of the sections before the end segment. Remember? Right? And at the end of the end segment, we had a splice garter point. Uh, remember? Give me one second here. So at the end of the end segment, I defined the splice point, right? And at the end of TPD segment, I also defined the splice point, right? So it's the splice point here and here, you know, at the end um, of the drapes. So when you go to the model here, I have the splice garter point here. And then I have TDI and, um, you know, TPD section. Um, meaning, you know, this is, uh, you know, like this, um, um, the girders uh, with varying depth, um, it's defined, and then the other part too. Uh, and then originally we had our splice girder point right over here, right? And now at the end of TPD, we also have a splice girder point. So we have a different splice girder point, like one and two here. Makes sense, right? So when you actually look at um, the stage, effect like this. Okay, so these, um, you know, above the super substructure portion um, come came in first. And then, you know, you can also erect the end parts. And then you can also erect the, you know, like the very last portion. And this erection sequence right now, um, they are simulated to be symmetrical. If you need to, you can sequence them so, so that, you know, one span comes in first, and after how many days, you know, the, um, the, um, the next span is um, erected and so on. So, but then basically, if you set up um, your model using the wizard, these type of sequencing, um, considering the splice garter point, will be managed um, using the wizard. So that's what this, um, the girder information part is about. And then if you look at my section list, I only have seven sections, while I had total seven segments in this one, right? Remember? So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? But I was able to define it only with the four. Um, of course, it's a different story when the section, I mean, when the structure isn't symmetrical. But that's how quickly and easily you can manage the splice garter point. But you don't need to go through this headache um, if you are just working with your precast composite bridge since it's a lot more simpler. And the same way you can have the, um, the tendon. One of the very common question I get is, you know, when, when it happens to be a, you know, when um, um, if it, uh, one of the very common question we receive is, is it possible to combine, you know, pretension um, strands and also the post-tension strands? Um, the answer is, of course. So basically, if you look at this one, how this one is defined, right? Um, if you look at it for, um, I have segment one, five, two, four, and three. So I actually segmented them in different way, you know, like um, um, for the taper portion alone, for the end part alone, and also for the middle part alone. So for different type of segments, right? And segments, you can actually define them um, flexibly over here, but most likely, you know, it's actually very similar to this tutorial case. So if you happen to have this application, it's a matter of comparing this with your case, but you can basically follow how this one is set up. And I was able to combine the pretension um, strands and the post-tension strands by doing it like this. So all the segment pretensions, right, um, the strands um, that are already embedded before they um, come to the site um, or, you know, on site but segment in the segments, um, you can define them separately. But for the post-tensioning, for linking all of the, um, the girders, uh, you can, I actually put 
all of the girders into the all segment, right? And then I defined um, the post tension. And then the way I, um, I was able to define a post tension by, you know, defining the post tension tendon property. So, and then I actually added them all into the tendon assignment list, meaning segment one, five, um, these are for the end segments, two for um, the taper portion, four also on the other span, and three for the middle span, all this, and uh, for the entire um, bridge length, you know, this post-tension and pre-tension combination can be defined um, in this tendon tab. Um, the loading, it's actually the same as steel or, you know, um, because this is tab is only for the dead load. Um, pretensions, um, you know, they are considered in the tendon tab here. And when you come to the construction stage, um, you can also easily use the template, you know, over here that's already optimized for the supply scorter um, bridge application. So, you know, just click the guide. Feel free to refer to, you know, the natural um, the, um, sequence of the supply scorter construction, um, substructure erection, the, you know, erecting the precast segments, right? And, you know, again, if they are in different order, um, you know, it varies span by span, um, feel free to reflect that also by using the customized window here, right? And then you will cast splices and make them continuous and then perform the first stage of post-tensioning, right? And finally cast the deck. And then if you want, you can also perform second stage post-tensioning. So um, I'm also expecting there may be a question as, can you post-tension um, in sequences? Um, you can also get the answer over here, um, yes. And then as the last stage, you can remove the temporary supports and place the barriers. And this is actually all set up in um, the, the table here. And if you want to, you know, modify them, feel free to use um, the interface here for customization, right? For temporary support position, you can define them. Um, you know, this is where the this is where the um, the endpoints of the segments are. So. And you can also specify which one is the post tension. So remember, I mentioned to you that you can post um, tension um, in sequences. And before in the tendon tab, we defined post tension one and post tension two. Um, they are almost identical, but with um, you know, um, um, you know, they are um, independent post tensioning. So if you just choose them right, you can actually define it as post tension one, the first post tensioning and then post-tension two, the second post-tensioning. So uh, you can easily use the construction stage um, setup over here, right? And once you hit on OK, you will get a model generated like this exactly, and you'll be able to see that wizard um, actually follow uh, the sequence of um, you know, for if it's precast, it's going to sequence it according to the precast construction. If it's a splice scorter, um, it's going to automatically follow the sequence of a pre um, um, the the splice scorter um, construction. And while I run the analysis real quick, uh, let me briefly kind of walk through some of the questions for a couple minutes. Okay. Um, I, there was a question, um, if the bridge is a combination of spliced and precast garter type, you know, how should we manage this? Um, if you're able to kind of explain a little more about, you know, um, if, it's the, if it's a case when, you know, a um, couple, um, um, one, one part of the bridge is spliced and it's just connected to precast garter um, 
part of the bridge if it's a case like that so you know like the two different um, part of bridges are kind of independent but just uh, you know happen to be connected if it's that case or are you referring to, you know, having the pre-cascader and post-tensioning in the end? Um, if you can kind of elaborate that, that will be very helpful. And um, the A and B input um, that are different for um, spin by spin, let me real quick double check. But this part is actually fixed for uh, multiple spins, yes. So actually, so if you want to kind of make a difference though, uh, remember in the workflow of a precast, right? There's always, uh, you're not limited to the way the wizard create you the model. So the wizard is built um, to be most comfortable and simplest, not really, um, you know, distracting you for, you know, more than 90% of the cases. But if you happen to have a case where, you know, details like A and B are varying, you know, over here, right? Then you can always, always, um, you know, create a model first, and using uh, using the uh, manual, you know, node and element, you know, move element, move node, um, this type of functions, you can actually easily, really easily, you can kind of tweak that. Um, I'll follow up with you um, personally to kind of give you a little more detail about it. Um, Oh, yes, and I also have a question that um, is the wizard able to handle, you know, a case where um, the bridge goes from straight to the curve uh, mid-length? Yes, so basically if you go to, if you go to uh, the multi-curve option here, this is where you can handle that. Uh, we also have an example of how you can manage um, this multi-curve. We actually have an example where the bridge goes straight and then curve in the middle. Um, so I will also, um, you know, um, share this with you. And I think I answered one of the question also, is the wizard able to um, handle continuity post-tensioning of splice girders? As you saw before, you can freely define different segments and also you can um, put the entire girder length into the segment group, right, defining as, you know, the entire length um, group so that you can define um, the post tension. Uh, this question is answered already, so you can define continuity uh, post tensioning of splice girders. You can distinguish one end and both end checking also, yes. And those details, right, those details, you can actually handle them. Uh, you can actually handle them when you define your, um, define them in the wizard or outside a wizard. Um, you have all the flexibility, you know, even after you work in the wizard, uh, you're free to actually come out and, um, and you know, alter them um, outside of the wizard. So basically, Um, and radius um, in the layout, this is actually referring to um, the radius of the reference line, right? So it depends on where you um, assign um, the reference line to be. So that's what the, um, the radius is for. Um, it, depending on where your reference line is, how the radius is defined for you, um, you can actually um, yeah, bring in the data according to um, your project. Uh, about my, uh, I have a question related to like a bootman wall and soil structure interaction. Since that's actually not a part of the training scope today, um, you know, that information will be rather um, provided in the follow-up. And Um, you can also define um, super elevation. That's actually um, notated here as bank rotation. So the super elevation of um, the superstructure, uh, you can actually define um, over here in the bank rotation. Yes. And this one, um, since you know you can actually define it by the station, 
um, you can actually have it vary along the curvature of the bridge. Uh, you can, of course, create the bridge overall um, with the large configuration using the wizard, and then you can modify the elements um, as necessary. Yes, uh, let me get to this portion real short, um, real quickly. And also, when I, uh, I want to show you how you can review um, the result um, before we have to end the training already. So let's say you already completed uh, working with your uh, model like this, right? And let's say you kind of need to modify something. Um, if it's something related to the length of the bridge or if it's related to um, the size of the section, no worries. Um, the element length, I mean the, um, the bridge, let's say. So let's say um, what will be a good, very good example. Let me give you a quick example like this. So if you happen to need to modify any of your node or element information, right? Yes, you have free access. Um, you are free to access your node table and the element table like this and you can always modify them as you need. So they are blue colored, right? Meaning you can always uh, modify them. And these gray sections cannot be modified. So, you know, uh, you can always modify the blue cells. Um, and this one, a lot of our users, if you happen to attend one of our training, you probably, um, the past seminar um, training, you probably know um, um, uh, Michael Roberts from HDR, he's also covered this. Um, um, my uh, Midas Civil has really good compatibility between Excel and the tables itself. So if you simply copy this data and then paste it into Excel, and let's say you kind of modify anything, you can simply copy in the Excel data and bring it to here. So, you know, you can, that, you can that simply modify the data like this. Um, it's actually a very common approach that uh, many of our users take. You know, after creating your model using the wizard, you have full freedom to modify any of the data you need. Um, in terms of the section two, uh, let's say you define something and you, happen, you need to kind of modify um, something after. You can always go into um, the properties here and let me actually modify one of the girder section to make it really um, easy to, um, you know, is, um, you can easily see. So here um, we have the, um, the girder section defined, right? I want to kind of um, show you how you can, you know, um, change this. So let me just make a very odd change. And let me just say, okay, oh, give me one second. Now we can do this. Yes. Okay, this change. Okay. So after, if you want to, you can actually change your section data even after you run the wizard, right? To kind of make it different from uh, what it was before. And this applies to not just changing a dimension of a section, this applies to changing the entire section from ASH to 3 to, to, to ASH to 4, or from your one of your DOT section to a different DOT section. So if you just define different section, you're able to kind of run um, the wizard data over it um, as many times um, as you want. Okay, and let me get you to the analysis result portion. So after you uh, run the modeling, right, actually there are a couple steps that I um, omitted um, up to here. So when you define your uh, wizard, there are a couple more things that you, um, that you need to um, do. And one is defining your creep and shrinkage, right? So for the concrete bridge, uh, we'll need um, the creep and shrinkage effects. Uh, you can actually define them using the built-in database in MIDAS. Uh, MIDAS actually has, um, you know, CBFIP, uh, most commonly used for, you know, um, uh, time dependency of concrete, especially for pre-stressed concrete composite bridge. Uh, you can define according to the database and the notational size of the member. Um, here, you can actually define them arbitrarily because the program, um, you know, 
the program can actually, because this uh, notational size of member, it varies along the bridge, right? If you have different sections at different part of the bridge, it's going to vary. It's difficult to kind of control all of them with one number. So um, later I might take you to somewhere you can actually have the program automatically calculated. And once you set these things, uh, you are also free to check the actual function that are built based on your um, input, which only requires like one uh, number, <laughs> pretty much. Um, the characteristic compressive strength of concrete after the 28 days. And you can also define your um, compressive strength, right? And then as the very last part, you simply need to link it uh, with your um, the, the concrete uh, material you used, especially for the girder and for the concrete deck portion. Okay. And where I mentioned to you that you can automatically update um, the, um, the long-term um, uh, the notational size of the member. Uh, so when you go to um, here, right, you will notice that for each composite section that are used in the model, uh, you will notice that, you know, there's H, H, and vol if, if you're using, uh, let's say, ash uh, you, you can input the volume surface ratio. Uh, but here we have H um, for CBFIP, right? And these number, um, the program actually will automatically um, update it if you just use this update all H option here. Yes. And then for the age of the, um, the girder, I'm going to put 28 and 7 so that we can reflect the hardening of the girder and the concrete deck each. So the age 28, because we want to see the girder effective with the strength at the um, 28 days, right, after it's, you know, cured and erected. And for the part 2, which is the deck, we want to see the, um, the effect starting from, let's say, like four days or so when the false works are removed. That's why the age is updated like this. So this time dependency is something you kind of need to, um, you know, come back to after defining them. And you need to update all age, you know, for the creep and shrinkage. And they are, when you actually go back to check it, you'll notice that the age parameters are updated automatically like this. If you're using a you know long-term creep and shrinkage that requires the volume surface ratio, um, you will go for the update long-term. This one will automatically update the volume surface ratio. Update all H will update the um, H, the notational size of the member over here. So you don't need to worry about you know computing those things for each different part of the section and things like that. And you can run the analysis and actually. Um, <laughs> Thank you for the correction. And yeah, after running the result like this, you can go to the result. Um, for actually the time being, I won't be able to, um, um, yeah, today um, is the first part in which I covered um, focusing on the wizard modeling. And in the next section, uh, what I'm going to do as a part of the elite training um, session, um, the second session following up will be about the design and the load rating check. And as a part of the design and the load rating check, what Midas Civil is doing, so basically after creating your model like that, and when you go to um, the design or um, the load rating, actually for pre-stress concrete, you can go to here. So here, you can actually perform the design checking for either composite or non-composite, it doesn't matter. Whichever case um, it is, if it's pre-stressed concrete composite structure, you can actually perform the design checking and load rating. And as a result, you will be able to get a Excel report like this. So if you look at it, um, you can actually see a summary of you know, your design condition, section properties, uh, materials that are actually put together in a presentable format. And this part is what I will be cover covering um, in the next session. 
but the next session is actually in May. Um, if it's difficult, um, if you are actually working on a project um, that you wish to see the material sooner, uh, we actually have a pre-recorded one as well. So feel free to um, reach out to us um, to ask for uh, the materials uh, related to it. And any of the questions uh, that are more specific and, um, you know, and, and technical support related, um, um, when you go to our website, uh, we are also trying to actively promote our new website. We've fully renovated it um, so that, you know, um, in the very near future, you will also have a, your PDH certificate um, bank. But when you go to the training and when you actually go to the support, you're going to see the technical support service tab. And this is where you can see different type of um, services available. For the users only, you can actually um, ask us one-to-one -one specific questions through the web board. But please note that this service is only available for our users. So um, in case you're not, hope you can become one in the near future. And thank you so much for your time. Any of the questions remained unanswered um, yet? I will be following up with them. And yep, hope to um, see you again in the second session. Have a great afternoon all. Um, have a good day.